This is Barry Zalma speaking for Claim School Incorporated with another story of true crime insurance fraud. This number 26 is entitled Life Insurance Can Be Hazardous to Your Health. I present these videos so you can learn how insurance fraud is perpetrated and what is necessary to deter or defeat insurance fraud. The Hungarian owned and operated a board and care facility for the aging in Carson City, Nevada. He brought his younger brother over from Hungary in 1975 to help him in the business. It was only a 20-bed facility, and with little help, the two could manage the entire business. The oldest brother was a thinker. He got an honorary Ph.D. from the New World Society of Abundant Consciousness that ran a school in the desert just north of Pahrump. After receiving his honorary degree for a donation of $15,000, he insisted on the title doctor. The doctor had no training in any field. He had a high school diploma and had operated several restaurants before buying the board and care facility. He believed the title conferred on him the right to prescribe medicine, to give psychological advice, and to do anything he pleased. He could get drugs for his patients from other than legitimate sources. He would bill their insurers as if they were prescription drugs prescribed by a staff physician. His younger brother maintained the facility, cooked the meals for the residents, doubled as a nurse, and ran the business. The doctor acted like royalty. Since the small business required both to work, if it was to make a profit, the business began to deteriorate. Cash flow was minimal. Patient services became almost non-existent. The doctor skimmed as much money into his pocket as he could and kept the patients alive. Neither he nor his brother drew anything much more than subsistence monies from the business. The dedicated younger brother made the business work. He began to cut personal corners. First, he decided to drop a $100,000 life insurance policy. With the reduced earnings of the business, he could not afford to pay the premium. The doctor who used the same insurance agent was told of the intent of his brother to cancel. The doctor asked the agent to keep the policy in effect without his brother's knowledge. The doctor would pay the premium as a business expense of the board and care facility. The agent, not wishing to lose his commission, agreed and kept the policy in force, accepting premium payments from the doctor. The younger brother suffered from severe hypertension. He controlled the disease by diet and medications. He trusted his older brother. He thought his older brother was wise and knowledgeable. He thought his older brother had at least the same level of expertise as any physician and trusted his brother more than a physician. After the doctor had paid the first monthly premium on the life insurance policy, he explained to his brother that the hypertension drugs prescribed for him were dangerous. He told his younger brother, that he had in the inventory of the board and care facility drugs that were more effective. Since they were in the stock of the facility, the doctor could give them to his brother at no cost. The brother stopped taking his prescribed medicine and started taking the drugs given to him by his brother. The doctor did not tell his brother that the drugs contained digitalis. Digitalis is a drug that although useful in reducing chest pains in people with heart conditions is poisonous in the amounts the doctor told his brother to take. It is even more poisonous to a person with hypertension. Within two weeks of his brother taking the drugs, the younger brother was found by his wife, apparently dead on the kitchen floor. Paramedics arrived and immediately began CPR because she did not know what to do after calling the paramedics, the wife called her brother-in-law. He arrived at the scene about the same time as the paramedics. He was hysterical. And in
interfered with the paramedics. They had to forcibly remove him from his brother so they could perform CPR. They put the brother in an ambulance and began racing towards the emergency hospital with red lights and sirens. The doctor followed and almost sideswiped the ambulance twice. They called for police help on the radio and a prompt city police officer pulled the doctor off to the side of the road and restrained him for sufficient time to allow the ambulance to arrive at the hospital. Unfortunately, they could not revive the younger brother. They pronounced him dead one hour after arrival at the hospital. The doctor convinced the wife that there should be no autopsy. His brother and her husband had a severe heart condition, and that was well documented. He explained there should be no reason to cut his body to satisfy a local ordinance. The doctor convinced the brother's family physician to sign the death certificate showing the cause of death as a heart attack. The family physician did so without evidence of such a heart attack. The family physician had not even seen the deceased within six months of his death. The family physician clearly violated the law. He thought the death certificate would help the family who appeared adamantly against the invasive procedures in the autopsy. The widow was not an intelligent woman. She had limited education in her country of birth, Hungary. She could barely read or write English and spoke it with a thick accent. She relied totally on her brother in law. He handled the disposition of her husband's estate. She signed whatever papers he put in front of her. One paper he put in front of her was a claim form making claim on the life insurance policy. The claim form did not use the sister-in-law's address, but rather a P.O. box held in secret by the doctor. The insurance company presented with an appropriate claim, signed by the widow on what appeared to be a proper death certificate, immediately issued its check for $100,000 plus interest made payable to the widow, the sole beneficiary named in the policy. The doctor received the check, he signed the widow's name to it and deposited the money in his account. He used the money to pay the debts of the board and care facility and to buy a new home for himself on five acres of desert property outside of Corona, Nevada. The widow was left with nothing but debts. She sold the home she and her husband lived in since arriving in the U.S. and after paying a commission to the realtor and funeral expenses, she had only $1,000 left. Her brother-in-law loaned her $10,000, which she used to buy some second-hand furniture and moved into a small apartment. She had a blackjack dealer at a casino and married him so she would have some means of support. The doctor lived in luxury for a year off the proceeds and then began planning his next insurance fraud. He had no other brothers to kill, so he decided to obtain life insurance on the residents of the board and care facility, none of whom had a long life expectancy. He lived on healthy, wealthy, and not so wise. This video was adapted from my book, Insurance Fraud Costs Everyone which is available along with my insurance fraud text as a paperback and a Kindle book from Amazon.com. Thank you for your attention.